Hey there, I am kind of rushing to get this video recorded, edited, and uploaded as soon as possible, and the reason why will soon be obvious. But let's get some pertinent things first. I have a lot of hypersonic sound devices. Some are consumer grade ones, some others of which are a little more powerful than consumer grade ones and potentially more dangerous. But the reason why I have these is because I think that audio lasers are super fascinating, even just from a physics perspective. I just barely understand how it works and I am not formally educated in physics or mathematics. So it's gonna take me a little bit of creativity and time to figure out a way to explain it in a video where I'm 100% confident that I am being scientifically sound. But one day I'm gonna go way deeper into this and I'm gonna experiment with this technology in a way that is a lot less depressing than helping my fellow American citizens avoid permanent hearing loss or physical pain or even physical damage as a result of sonic weapons. LRADs or long range acoustic devices or sonic weapons are not safe. I am not encouraging you to stand around with paper in front of your face and wait for the batteries to run out. But the information you just heard should help you minimize the damage you take while you move to a safer place. Now, if you wanna watch me torture myself with sonic weapons to come to this conclusion, feel free to watch the rest of this video. So right off the bat, I just wanted to say that if for some reason you think that I shouldn't be helping protesters protect themselves from non-lethal weapons, I don't fucking care. If you have some sort of particular political criticism to this video and it makes you want to unsubscribe to my channel, then by all means, unsubscribe. So again, I am really rushing through this and I intend on making a much more educational entertaining and fun version of this video in the future. So LRAD or long range acoustic devices also have kind of a variety of names that all pertain to the same group of patents. And uh, some of them are like hypersound, hypersonic sound, ultrasonic sound, um, sound cannon, sound lasers. But what they all have in common is that they transmit sound like a laser rather than like a light bulb. So if my studio monitor back there, that would be like a light bulb. It sort of transmits waves all around the room. This guy, on the other hand, transmits waves direct, like I was shining a laser at somebody. From what I can find in the last few days, Phoenix, New York, Columbus, Ohio, Denver, Greensboro, and Charleston, North Carolina are using LRADs for crowd control. There's probably a lot more places that are using LRADs for crowd control, but the media doesn't seem to pick up on it as much as it does tear gas or rubber bullets. I think that the media and protesters both don't seem to think that LRADs are as dangerous in comparison but they fucking are. The LRADs used in crowd control go up to 160 decibels. And to give you an accurate comparison of what it's like to have 160 decibels targeted at you from a hypersonic transmitter, it would be like if you had a friend uh, grab a shotgun and put the nozzle up next to your ear and fire it. The reason they chose the maximum power limit of 160 decibels is not a coincidence. Uh, typically around 150 decibels is where your eardrum just breaks. And that's like instantly breaking it. Anything over 120 decibels for more than eight seconds causes permanent hearing damage. So I guess depending on how much you value your hearing, I would actually say that sonic weapons are probably more dangerous than most other non-lethal crowd control methods. So quickly, a really brief look at how hypersonic sound works. The principles behind hypersonic sound are really, really complicated because upon your initial impression, they contradict the way that we think sound or even just waves work. For example, higher frequencies take more energy to create and more energy to maintain. And this is one of the reasons, for example, why you will hear a rumbling truck in the distance, but you won't hear the squeak of its brakes. A common misconception is that because lower frequencies are spread out more, they travel farther. This is actually false. They both travel the same distance. However, everything that a higher frequency encounters acts as a deterrent. But all of this doesn't resonate no pun intended, with how hypersonic sound works because we're pushing frequencies way up into the ultrasound range and then somehow getting a long range sound device. There's like a half dozen patents that pertain to this and they all have slight variations, but this is the gist of them all. It turns out that when you push audio frequencies high enough, the molecules in the air become a non-linear medium that modulates and demodulates audio. So if this device were pointed at me, it would be as if it were a radio station antenna and my body were the radio. Now this is impressive and it, 
This is not impressive. I am very unimpressed with the quality of this whiteboard. But what is impressive is that hypersonic sound, to make things even more precise, they have this massive array of smaller speakers. So the inner speakers will be this hypersonic modulated signal and the outer speakers will actually be this exact same signal, but inverted. So check this out. I'm gonna speak very softly into this boom mic and then I'm going to turn the gain up after I'm done with this video. And that way you'll be able to hear a whole bunch of background noise. My name is Ben and I have a dog named Lucy. So what I'm gonna do next in a simple wave editor is I'm gonna take a half second of that background noise. I'm gonna invert the waveform and then I'm going to paste it over that entire recording. My name is Ben, and I have a dog named Lucy. My name is Ben, and I have a dog named Lucy. This is exactly how noise-canceling headphones work, or if you've ever seen a movie being filmed, they'll usually make everybody be quiet and sample the room tone. That's so they could invert that waveform and remove the background noise for the overall scene. So again, we have your normal audible waveform, and that is being encoded with a signal somewhere up in the megahertz, and that is what's coming out of here on the positive side and that's what's coming out of the side ones on the negative side and this coats the signal with essentially noise reduction so the wave dispersion of a normal speaker would be like this the wave dispersion of a hypersonic sound speaker would be a lot more like this because you have those inverted waveforms on the side doing their normal job of dispersion. There's so many fun and modern uses of this technology. However, unfortunately, today we have to concentrate on how to stop ultrasonic waves since they're being used to harm human beings. I'm trying really, really hard to just stick to my zone and not go on a fucking tangent. But one thing that's absolutely disgusted me is that a lot of these companies that are selling LRADs to police departments and cities are marketing them as extremely safe. If you live in a city in America, it's actually probable that your tax dollars have paid for some of these devices and they are not cheap by a long shot. It's kind of hard to get your hands on the law enforcement manual for using these devices, but I've seen some of them and the front few pages just bragging about how it's a very safe and effective crowd deterrent device and then every page after that has a warning about how if you get in between the crowd and the device itself you could cause yourself permanent physical damage permanent hearing loss all of these things and it's just full of warnings but the warning only applies to law enforcement or military not the people that you're actually shooting the fucking thing at the human beings that they're using LRADs on do not understand how the technology works the police officers or military personnel who are operating LRAD do not understand how the technology works. The mayors or governors or police chiefs who are using taxpayer money to pay for LRAD devices do not understand how this technology works. If you're a government employee or a police officer or you work in city hall, anything, you need to go to your superiors and let them know that this is not safe to be using on your citizens. And you know what? Even if you don't care about your citizens or if you're one of those people who just says, well, if they don't want to get hurt, don't protest. Someone is going to figure out that this has caused hearing loss and they're going to be able to prove it and it's going to cost you millions of dollars in litigation. If you have an LRAD device that has a targeted amplification rating of higher than 90 decibels, you are hurting the people you are pointing it at period. All right, everybody, please stay safe and don't forget to wear a mask and wash your hands frequently throughout all of this. If you learned anything from this video, if you liked it, smash that subscribe button. And now watch me give myself and inadvertently my wife a really bad tension headache by testing audio weapons on myself on a dock. I've been able to hunt down a couple manuals for these devices, which are not that easy to come by. And the ones I've been looking for are the ones that are used by police, not the ones that are used by the Coast Guard or something against other ships, which is apparently another use for this. So um, the three modes that I seem to see, the one that's used the most is just an alarm mode. And I believe that is, that's in like the 2200 hertz to 3200 hertz and it's actually a saw a reverse saw sweep um so we're gonna try that one that's the one that i've seen in videos right i see videos of police uh shooting sonic weapons at uh protesters or something like that that's the one where i see the most use however apparently the most painful set of frequencies that you could use on one of these devices is between 19,000 and 20,000 hertz now you may know that older people like myself being 40 
can't actually hear that high. Most older people can't hear above 18,000 or so, whereas younger people, young whippersnappers like teenagers and even some 20-year-olds, they can hear in that range. But since this is a high frequency that's being shot at my skull and vibrated, I may actually be able to hear it. And I would imagine that that will be the case. So I'm gonna start with the alarm tone first and I'm gonna start by testing the noise cancellation headphones. So to give you an idea of what the setup looks like, this is our background. It's over, I would say, about a quarter mile of just lake and um, some trees on the other end. So that way, nothing will reflect back into my wife's face. There will be a little bit of reflection off of this wood, but I imagine it'll absorb it pretty well. I hope it does. So most of these LRAD units have that default disperse tone and that is the reverse saw wave and that's what we're going to test on me now so right now i have these noise cancellation headphones on with what i consider to be the best setting for noise cancellation to be honest this isn't as bad as i thought it would be although i don't think you're aimed at my head oh yeah okay there we go it's so from one to five i would make this one it's not painful it's really annoying i can't seem to collect my thoughts because it's just loud and really obnoxious but i feel like i could probably exist with this shooting at me for some time i wouldn't be having any fun though it would make me disperse this is probably like the lightest use of it <laughs> okay maybe Maybe two out of five. Uh, th so this is noise cancellation and it's doing about 10% of noise canceling. Let me switch to another mode. I'm gonna just see if any of this is effective. This one, I just hear it really loud in the left ear. So just as a safety measure, if I drop my microphone, as we get into the higher frequencies, that means stop. All right, and this is the third mode. This is probably the best of the three on these noise reduction headphones, but I, I can't, I still can't really like, I'm not enjoying myself. It's really, really obnoxious. And this again with is with the best I could get out of these noise cancellation headphones. Yeah, it's, it's still really, 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 really annoying. That's the best way I could possibly put it. All right. Shoot it at the geese. All right, so with the motorcycle, the ambient uh, sound level is about in the 40s. Okay, uh, aim it at the decibel meter. So I measured the decibels of this higher tone and it maxes out around 80 decibels, which is probably uh, a loud alarm clock. So it won't damage my hearing, at least with short-term exposure, which is a good thing because that's something I would really like to avoid. The first thing I'm going to do is what people being attacked with one of these weapons during a protest would do, which is cover their ears. That's going to be my first test. Uh, and this is the 19,000 hertz blast of hypersonic sound. I'm not even talking to the microphone. I would say that's like, in that short period of time, I would say that's like a three out of five. That actually hurts. It feels a bit like a migraine almost. It, I don't know, tensed up my, I don't know how to describe it. This is gonna be the worst video ever because I can't really speak or collect my thoughts while this is happening. It's so strange, it's so quiet, but it hurts. It's very weird, it's like a quiet, it's almost like I have tinnitus in both ears. A very, very high-pitched tinnitus. I can't even think of the tone that it was at, though. It's like, ah, all right. And it hurts the back of my head. That is so bizarre. All right, so let's start uh, figuring out how to make this not the fucking case. We're going back with that default reverse saw alarm device, the dispersion one that's on the LRADs. And I'm going to use this thick, heavy piece of acoustic foam. This is very, very, very thick foam. Uh, it's not breathable. It should hopefully do the trick. I would be very surprised if it didn't. So hit me. Down. Uh, down more. 
down a little more. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Not really, no. Why, why would this go through here? That's not the result I wanted. Oh, I can't I'm not even speak in the microphone. It barely does anything, which I don't understand why. I don't really understand what's happening acoustically. Uh, let's aim it back down. I would say that this heavy-ass piece of foam probably helped almost not at all. It would absolutely not be worth it to bring acoustic foam out with you anywhere where you will be being shot with an LRAD device. This is your standard Ross foam board. Um, you see a lot of these at protests. Let's see if this works. This one is made out of foam, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> All right. This one helps better than the acoustic foam did, oddly, and it's shooting it back to you. It's actually reflecting it back to my wife. This is actually not terrible. This is better. This is the best out of the things we've tried so far. The Ross foam board makes it about 50% better and it also reflects it. So it could either reflect it back to the LRAD device or the person who's using the LRAD device or you could inadvertently reflect it at somebody who doesn't deserve to have it reflected at them. So you kinda gotta be careful with where you're reflecting it and it's also a, a very precise thing and you're holding a big board so you can't really be precise with it. The reason why I don't have a decibel meter behind the board and the reason I'm not doing an A and B comparison is because at this time, I don't really think it's that applicable due to the nature of how this is transmitting sound. I'm not sure that my decibel meters could accurately read sound when it's being transmitted in hypersonic frequencies. I think it's just only going to read certain harmonics of that sound that's within the frequency that this was made to detect. All right, this is actually a 80 cent cardboard Walmart poster that is pretty thin. We'll see how this does. Oh. This is the best yet. I would say this gives me like an 80% relief. This is not bad at all. This is actually really good. I'm gonna walk towards it. It doesn't even get bad when you get closer. Is it reflecting it? This is actually totally tolerable. As long as I'm holding this in front of my face and as long as it's not angled or I'm not moving it, as long as it's like in the right position, this is actually pretty tolerable. Of course, it's still annoying, but it sounds more like a car alarm going off. So far, by far, the best result has been with the thin cardboard. And that makes me think that maybe if it causes something to vibrate that's in your hand, that may actually be the most effective. But before we leave this place, I'm going to try a hoodie just to see if that helps. All right, let's do this. Down. All right. Wow. I would say that the hoodie does literally nothing at all. If you blindfolded me and asked me if I could tell if a hoodie was between me and the LRAD device, I would probably fail it. You can't literally makes no difference whatsoever, unfortunately. Okay, this is the 19,000 hertz one. The painful one. Okay. No. Oh, I am holding it the other way. I'm holding it glossy side up. It, okay, so glossy side up, it doesn't actually help with the 19,000 hertz. Ah. Uh. It doesn't help as much. Okay, aim it down. Or somewhere else. Thanks. It doesn't... Okay, so I did find one thing out. The glossy side of this doesn't reflect it as good as the non-glossy side. And the non-glossy side actually didn't really do all that much. It still hurt really bad. Like, it still, I still felt sonic pressure in my head. I, I, but again, it sounded quiet. It sounded like a tiny tone, but I felt sonic pressure. Since it seems like the higher the frequency, the less effective this guy is, uh, I'm just going to try 15,000 hertz, which is still going to be painful, I'm sure. I'll try it glossy side and non-glossy. Okay. Whoa, down. Oh my god, this is the worst. This is the worst one yet. How is 15 worse? This helps. This makes it not hurt. <laughs> This poster makes 15,000 hertz, not hurt on the glossy side. Okay, well, it hurts a little bit. 
Oh, you're not pointing it at me. That's why. Oh, Jesus. Okay, there we go. Oh my God, that's so weird. It's like changing pitches, and I know it's the same. This helps a lot. This actually helps a tremendous amount. <laughs> wow. The thin cardboard actually helps quite a bit with the 15,000 hertz. However, not that much with the 19,000 hertz. Have no idea why. Haven't really prepped that much to figure out why for this video. I just kind of wanted to get this video out sooner than later. Um, but this is the winner. Ah, oh, my head still hurts. Where's your headache? In my head. Well, where, where in your head? Yeah, the front. Like, it's just like a tension headache? Yeah, that's where I have it too. It's like right across here. You couldn't hear the 19,000 hertz, could I you? I could when it reflected on me. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, so I have a headache from all this. And oddly enough, just from the reflection from the poster board, my wife has a tension headache as well in the front of her head. Mm -hmm. So now we both feel like shit. <laughs> Wow, I actually didn't expect it to have any physical effects like that. I expect it to just be really obnoxious, but it actually does hurt my head. Wow, I feel like I, I dove into a pool that's a little deeper than I had intended.